My name is Pat McCabe. That was the name I, I was born with. Through my travels and journey and my personal life and my spiritual life, I was given another name, and that name is Woman's Den Shining. I was born to Diné people, and so um, my clan comes from my mother and my grandmother. And uh, it's where the red earth meets the water clan. And my father's clan, they say I'm born born for, is Ashi, which is salt clan. I was uh, uh, raised apart from my culture for most of my life. And that came about through my parents um, being raised in the missionary schools. And my grandmother, and then she sent her kids. So by the time my generation came, I was, I was pretty well separated. It's been uh, a real, a real exploration and journey to, to, to understand my own identity and therefore understand my purpose. Um, I came to Seed. I had a fr uh, uh, an instructor at the University of New Mexico in Taos, and she was teaching uh, the Power of Native Women's class. And she knew about Seed Graduate Institute, and she kept saying, oh, you have to go, you have to go. And so Seed was having a conference about um, healing through sound and song at Ojo Caliente, in Ojo Caliente, New Mexico. So I was pretty skeptical, but I decided that I would go because it's at Ojo Caliente. So, you know, beautiful waters, and I thought, well, if all else fails, I'll just sit in the water all the time, and that will be great. And um, so I went, and I had no idea how powerful that it was going to be and who the people were that were there. I met Nancy Maryboy for the first time. But it was just so amazing to um, find some kind of place for what was coming up through me and also to meet another Navajo woman that I could look to as, as a kind of mentor, at least in this process of the conferences. Um, and so I offered to sing some songs at this conference and eventually um, we were trying to come up with a question at one point for people and, uh, and Nancy turned to me and asked me about that and I, and I threw out a question which ended up being used at that conference. So somehow um, which seems like a, a divine destiny. I was sort of really unfolded into the process that seed, seed encompasses, certainly at that conference. And I, because of the authenticity and the real, um, uh, real live bridging between all peoples that was taking place there. For instance, um, they had uh, a, a rabbi there and he was included as part of indigenous wisdom and healing. And he talked a lot about how his, his lineage um, goes back thousands of years as well. And, uh, and that really made me feel at home and really made me feel good. For me, I feel like I spend a lot of my life reinventing the wheel, <laughs> reinventing the cultural wheel. I wasn't raised in my traditional culture and it's something that I've been exploring and coming to as I think most Native people who get separated from their culture, there's always this sense of longing, there's always a, sensing of, a sense of wanting to go back. And, um, and for me, uh, it, that was a very, very difficult process. So I've really come to believe that part of my role about this reinventing the cultural wheel has to do with really fully understanding, really deep in my heart, that these ways the ways of my ancestors, the ways of all the indigenous peoples, and ultimately all the people on earth. You know, I, heard, I went to a, another conference at Ojo Caliente and I heard Martine Prechtel really speak adamantly about the fact that we are all indigenous. We are all indigenous at some point. We've all had different levels of takeovers and conquerors and, uh, and all like that, but ultimately we are all indigenous. So I think my, my life, uh, my mission, as I chose to accept it, was to really um, come by a lot of these truths through my own prayer. I find that as I pray and listen and pray and listen and pray and listen, in isolation, a lot of the time, these things come to me. And as we talk, and as I went to that first conference, and I was hearing other Native people talk about what they had been taught, you know, they had the teachers, they had their elders, they had their aunties, they had, you know, their, their grandparents. And I realized that I was being told those same things. 
um, by spirit. My path is to um, is to is to really establish that those entities that taught my ancestors are still present. They're right here, and they're willing to teach right now. They're willing to teach someone like me, who was raised completely in the city, who was raised, um, you know, completely apart from my culture and from native culture in general, and that that I can be reached in that way. And and because of that process, you know, so to come and so to answer your question, to come back into seed and to hear this going on and to hear that bridging, that real commitment, sincere commitment to bridging and understanding between the peoples, the peoples who have access to these teachers and culture and traditions and the people who feel like they have lost it, um, uh, really resonated with me and I feel like my life is really committed to that. You know, I was talking at, at lunch yesterday with somebody and we were talking about how do you learn your language? Um, when, when, you, when you weren't raised with it. And I was talking about how uh, uh, a medicine woman had told me that she had met a woman who had just said she was just going to pray and ask the spirits to, to, to instruct her. And gradually, over time, she is receiving a lot of that language. And then she has chances to go home periodically and get more practice that way. But we were talking about it and we were saying, well, all those ways the way that the earth is, the way that the winds move, the way that the sun moves, the way that the animals move, the way that the waters move in a particular area generated a certain language. And so all those things, and this isn't true everywhere, and, and that's very frightening to me, but in theory all of these things are still taking place. And so if we walk and we pray and we listen, we're going to come upon the inspiration for those same sounds, for those same ways, and those spirits to come and talk through us so that we have our language. So right now I'm still putting all of that language, uh, all of that that's coming through the English language. Um, and as we talk about in, at these uh, dialogues and all, you know, it's, it's sort of unfortunate, some people would say, that the medium is English because English has its limitations, as all languages do. But I feel like because that's my first language um, and I'm a writer and a composer of songs and, uh, and a painter, that's another language, um, all these things are coming out through, through that language and that puts me in a position to be able to speak to sort of both sides if there, are, if there really is such a thing. Um, and so I think Seed really uh, makes that makes that effort and the collection of people that come to the dialogue is is just phenomenal and um, and when that spirit of intention of true understanding and coming into group mind from all different walks of life comes into the same room uh, there's just nothing there's nothing better in the world for me than to be a part of that experience uh, because I think that's the critical the critical point right now